Hi there, Language Arts Lady here with episode hi, episode number 16 of 10 Minute Grammar. Um, I'm excited to bring you this because this <laughs> is a an often forgotten part of speech that I think is really, really important. So let me back up. When I first began the 10 Minute Grammar podcast, I, the first uh, 10 episodes, I did the first 10 parts of speech. All right, and these were like the ones that were customarily thought of as being the first parts of speech. They are the ones that um, people, you know, think of when they think of, um, you know, subjects, ver you know, nouns, verbs, prepositions, you know, all the basics, so to speak. And there's a lot of controversy around that, right? Some places have eight, some places have 10, some have 12. Depends on the grammar handbook, the school of thought, you know, the textbook that you're using and so forth. Okay, so um, I narrowed it down to 10 um, based on the fact that eight were too few, 12 was too many. <laughs> okay, so anyway, enough of that. So those parts of speech are the ones that we traditionally think of as the parts of speech. The today's episode, episode number 15, is um, what I like to think of as the 11th part of speech. I actually think it fits more in with the 10 and that we should just knock out determiners and you can see what I was saying about determiner, determiners because determiners are always some other part of speech too. Um, but that's neither here nor there. We did determiners as the number 10. So I'm gonna call this one number 11, even though um, I am very biased towards it as being one of the top 10, as being uh, something that's taught early, um, and there are multiple reasons for that. So let me dig into it, okay? Episode number 16, the 11th part of speech is what we call subordinators. Now, the first problem is that just like articles and noun markers, and just like, um, you know, some will say indefinite pronouns are pronouns, and then they'll say, somebody else will say, no, those are nouns, or no, those are um, uh, pronoun adjectives, or you know how everything is called, you know, so many different things. It gets very, very confusing, right? Um, so subordinators are not always called subordinators. Um, they are sometimes called, um, uh, coordinating subjectives. There's sometimes, <laughs> cheat sheet keeps falling on the floor. They're sometimes called um, uh, subjunctive coordinators even. They're sometimes called um, conjunctive subordinators, um, which I don't like that because that's confused with conjunctive adverbs. I'll do that later. Anyway, but I like to call them subordinators. If you remember, when I introduced the parts of speech, I said that I like to call the parts of speech the terminology that is acceptable, but is also the most related to what the word does. All right, and that is why I have chosen subordinators for the name of the subordinators instead of some of those other names that I don't like that I just mentioned. Um, and this is why, because subordinators the word subordinator actually is representative of what the subor of what that part of speech does in the sentence. And I feel like just like with noun markers, they mark a noun, right? We can tell that a noun is coming. I think, you know, adverbs have the word verb in them. We can teach that they first start out describing verbs. I think anytime we have that advantage to saying this part of speech, its name is indicative of what it does, we are that much further ahead in teaching students the parts of speech. That's why I chose subordinators. So subordinators um, have the word, the, the, the term subordinators has the prefix sub in it, has a prefix sub. And sub um, means less or down. So I tell my kids, you know, don't forget, sub means down. It can mean down like in a submarine going down. It can mean less, like if I'm not here and we have a sub, we have a substitute teacher, then we have um, somebody lesser than me. <laughs> they always get a big kick out of that. Oh my goodness, my students are so great. <laughs> yeah, they like it when I say that. Anyway, <laughs> um, or like in the case of, um, you know, substandard, like that means you're below the standard. So the prefix sub has a lot of meaning to it. So calling them by that title, subordinators, tells us right off the bat that they are less. And that's, what it, that's how I begin. So it all begins 
with subordinators being less. All right. Um, now, why don't we just go ahead and just teach this more frequently, more um, earlier, and um, more elaborately? Because it is that's such an essential part of speech. So, subordinators, they make up sentences because they make up subordinate clauses. I'll talk to that in just a second. Okay, they give more information. Okay, so in, in a way, because they uh, are the beginning of subordinate clauses and they make up sentences, you know, I know it's not needed to make a sentence. A subordinate clause is not needed to make a sentence, like in the case of a noun and a verb, or actually a subject and a verb. Um, but it does make up sentences in many of the same ways that the other parts of speech do that we think are so essential. Number two, it gives more information just like a prepositional phrase gives more information, just like adverbs give more information. I mean, they all give more information. So why not subordinators as one of the parts of speech more prominently is what I'm saying. And thirdly, this is the real reason why I feel like they need to be um, front and center and taught more frequently and used uh, more extensively in exercises for students. And that is because they require special punctuation. So, when you start a sentence of the subordinate clause, put the comma in when you hear the pause. Salsa, that's what my kids say, because they know I like salsa. Anyway, um, yeah, it requires special punctuation. So that is all the more reason to teach subordinators early and often. All right, now, um, when, we first, when I first set out teaching subordinators, I start out with a simple rhyme that my um, younger kids can learn, right? And this is on their weekly Think Fast quiz. Those are at my Teachers Pay Teacher store, uh, beginning Think Fast quiz and advanced Think Fast quiz. And having these things in their front of, in the front of them every single week is the way to ensure that when you come back around to punctuating subordinate clauses, they're not starting all over with, what is a subordinator? Right? Because they do it weekly in their subordinate, in their weekly review quiz, their Think Fast grammar quiz, beginning and advanced. Highly recommend using those. Check those out at my Teachers Pay Teacher store. Okay, so I start out with my littles. They're just so precious with a rhyme because I do like to use rhymes and mnemonics and things like that right off the bat. And I start out teaching them since, when, that, though, because, if, all, though. Seven main subordinators. We used to do six, but I realized that my Older kids were not remembering that, which is the most common subordinator of all. So I had to stick it in the rhyme and make it seven instead of six. So it is since, when, that, though, because, if, all, though. All right, those are the first seven. And at first they're just memorizing them. They're just learning them in rhyme, just like they're learning on the Think Fast quiz. Every week they're learning all their prepositions. I mean, many, many prepositions. They are learning, they're being helping and linking verbs. They're learning their coordinating conjunctions. They're learning their interjections. They are learning their, um, trying to think of on the quiz, noun markers, uh, uh, and a the, three little words, tell you that a noun is about to be heard. They're learning all of this every single week on the quiz, okay? So that's how we start out. We start out just with memory work, right? Because little kids are sponges. I don't want to stay there too long though, because I'm not a, uh, an advocate of teaching a lot of parts of speech and then teaching why, how they work later too far down the road. So at first we start out since, when, that, though, because, if, all, though. All right, the next step in teaching subordinators is teaching the subordinator check sentence. So just like in the preposition episode when I told you about the preposition check sentence, there's also a subordinate subordinator check sentence. And the most recent one that I designed that's in all of my newer materials is the best one because like, 70% of all subordinators will fit in it. Because when that though, I mean, since when that though, because if all though, six of those seven will fit in it. And um, so will like two dozen of the other 30, okay? And that is blank, the submarine went down, we could still slash not see it. Blank, the submarine went down, we could still slash not see it. So let me give you a little subordinator review here by showing you how effective this check sentence is. When the summary went down, we could not see it. After the summary went down, we could not see it. Although the summary went down, we could still see it. 
And as much as the submarine went down, we could not see it. Before the submarine went down, we could still see it. Um, uh, whenever the submarine went down, we could not see it. Um, although the submarine went down, we could not see it. If the submarine goes down, we will not see it. Okay, literally so many subordinators fit in that check sentence. The beauty of that check sentence is that it tells what they do. They are subordinate, just like a submarine. They, the check sentence has the word submarine in it and subordinator has the word sub in it, right? So here we are teaching a part of speech based on the term that tells what it does. Here we are teaching a check sentence based on what that part of speech does, just like the preposition check sentence, okay? It's great, songs, rhymes, mnemonics, all of those things are great, but if we can tie it to what the part of speech actually does, we are golden, all right? We are absolutely golden. All right, that is going to be it today for subordinators, but next week on part two of subordinators, I'm going to show you why the punctuation is so crucial and, and give you even more reasons why subordinators should be taught early and often. Thank you for joining me with this episode. Please don't forget to subscribe at the blog so that you get all of my emails and everything that comes through to teach you how to teach language arts. See you soon.